Uh, first of all, we had uh, a call of one of the major mortgage player in the country. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the organization that establishes the rules for the mortgage industry, for uh, whether the cryptocurrency statements should be ad- adopted for the mortgage approvals and so on. And uh, they have a whole team already. They want to adopt, they want to make a proof of concept. Uh, and the question is no longer what is blockchain. The question is, please pay attention to us. Please have a call with our team, how we can integrate it. This content is brought to you by BitGo, which is one of the top crypto custodians in the crypto industry. BitGo works with many big companies and brands, such as Pantera Capital, Bitstamp, and Bitcoin IRA. Nike also selected BitGo to power its wallets for its NFTs. And BitGo has many great services, such as hot wallets, custodial wallets, self-managed cold wallets, and NFT wallets. Many institutions trust BitGo with its top-level security and incredible services, such as being able to deploy your capital while it's in custody, which includes lending, borrowing, trading, staking, DeFi access, and more. If you'd like to learn more about BitGo, please visit bitgo.com, link in the description. Welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. With me today is Natalia Karianeva, who's the CEO of Poppy. Natalia, great to have you back on. Thank you so much for having me, Tony. Hi, everyone. Natalia, you know I'm a big fan of you and the work you're doing at Proppy. I believe uh, real estate will be on the blockchain uh, from a transactional standpoint as well as tokenization. So lots of questions for you and all the latest and greatest that you guys are doing. Uh, so let's start with what's new with Proppy. Absolutely. There have been so many new things in Proppy, in our ecosystem, and overall in the crypto industry. So I'm excited to have this conversation with you. But since uh, we last chatted and your interview, I think the major update on our ecosystem is that we backed a new ecosystem project called Proppy Keys. And then Proppy also launched a licensed title and escrow business about a year ago. And with that business model, where we utilize our transaction platform on blockchain, uh, we're close to be profitable. And then also last week, we launched a partnership, a collaboration integration with Coinbase, the Coinbase wallet. Uh, so super, super excited. Another item, we launched a AI model for document recognition and automation of the transaction last year. Um, so again, a lot of stuff to update you with. So let's talk about Proppy Keys. How does that work? Absolutely. So this project, Proppy Keys, was beta launched only a couple of uh, months ago, but last week it was the major official launch and it is built on base, the mm-hmm. layer two on Ethereum network. Uh, Proppy Keys allows users to mint addresses, home addresses. Mm-hmm. And then keep those addresses all over the world on your wallet, in your wallet. And then you can put your deed on chain, attaching it to the address. Or even upgrade your home, if you mint at your own home, to an R- RWA NFT. Oh, wow. So to your point of RWA uh, and the tokenization and all these things that are happening. So I can, let's say the house I live within here at New Jersey... I can create the key for this property location and then put the actual, well, obviously the deed mint at within the NFT. Is that how it works? Exactly. So first you buy your address. You can also buy the whole street. And then there is a gamification like in similar to Monopoly, but it's a very crypto native staking based uh, uh, protocol that will allow you to mean homes and neighbors and so on. But let's say you meet at your own address. It mm-hmm. costs only 10 property tokens, which is about $10 today. Actually, we just reduced it to $5 uh, and, and five property tokens. And then if you want to keep your deed on chain, you click uh, upgrade uh, the NFT, you pay additional 100 property tokens. And then because we have a licensed title and escrow company, automatically we extract your deed from 
the county and send it to IPFS encrypted with a password so that you can keep it securely. Because last year alone, there were about $400 million lost in title fraud. And multiple counties are being hacked all over the country, unfortunately. So this data, the, the deed uh, uh, data is not secure for um, homeowners currently. Mm. So can I do this across the United States and or is it beyond the United States as well? Minting addresses actually is a global product. Uh, so we call it Mint the World. Uh, mm -hmm. We encourage people all over the world to uh, buy their addresses, uh, play with them, and even uh, mint landmark uh, through our AI integration where an AI will generate a, an image and you can add Bitcoin or Ethereum or any uh, popular coins on top of the image and keep it on your wallet. But Mm. The upgrades are available only for the United States for now. Mm. Now, can I mint? You mentioned I can do my entire neighborhood. Is it kind of first first come, first serve where I can take the property, even if I don't own it <laughs> and create the NFT? Exactly. That's why we encourage people to hurry up and mint their own home before somebody else grabs it. But if somebody else did it, no worries. There is a game between minters and homeowners where the homeowner can come and claim their address uh, and uh, it will be um, the upgrade uh, to tier two right away. Uh, the payment is 100 property tokens, as I mentioned, and then 50 property tokens actually goes to the minter. So you are incentivized to mint your whole neighborhood and then go and explain them, hey, here's your address. Here's my gift to you. Uh, you can upgrade it. You can keep your deed on chain. Uh, you need to do X, Y, Z steps. And here are the benefits. And then the protocol will incentivize you with 50 property tokens. It will also give you a special OG NFT uh, as a present and will give you 5X uh, staking power uh, in the property key staking protocol. Mm. Now, you mentioned the county will, will facilitate adding the deed and so forth for a property you own. So I'm assuming they go through the whole verification process that if someone tried to, say, put a deed they found online or something on there, the county may reject that? Was that how it works? I, I, and once again, excuse my rookie questions. I just trying to figure out the logistics. If someone was to, say, try to take my address and maybe they found a deed, a copy of the deed, but it's an outdated deed and they tried to add it to it. Yeah, yeah. That's a great question. First of all, when we add deeds on chain, uh, it's a timestamp of the past, right? Uh, you may have a new one. So it's it's an immutable record and it can serve as an evidence in many courts in the United States. But it's not a proof of you to transfer ownership. That's upgrade number three. The tier three, the next upgrade where you create your, uh, you create an RWA NFT from your home with our help. That's where, uh, the final source of ownership is the NFT itself. While, and we did those as, as you remember, that's when we had this interview last time. Um, it's, uh, when we were transferring NFTs, uh, of real estate ownership uh, through LLCs recorded already in the county. Instantly, entirely uh, via smart contracts, uh, that was the big innovation of uh, the, the, the previous cycle. Um, so yeah, the, when you upgrade your deed on chain and put your deed on chain, it's just an additional evidence of that current deed. Uh, we extract the latest deed, of course, uh, and we put it uh, to your NFT in your wallet. Uh, we also verify uh, through a very simple KYC uh, that it's mm -hmm. you who is subgrading the, the NFT, sure. uh, so that we avoid uh, any strangers to just uh, mean addresses and personal information. Right, right. Okay. So th that I guess that's the answer. Because I was wondering, yeah, you know, what if someone was to, you know, try to do something, but to your point, you go through that KYC process. Um, so Natalia, I know we're very early um in this cycle of tokenization and putting real estate on the blockchain and much more. Um, and do you see the, you know, the 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 innovation that you guys are doing that, you know, maybe in five years 
the, the National Realty Association and maybe you know different folks in different states are going to start adopting this technology? Absolutely. I think we are in the very beginning of this story uh, where we have a proven track record that this innovation works better than the traditional real estate transaction. Uh, and also all those industry participants that we've been educating for years now, right? Probably has been around since 2017. Uh, and obviously we're very well connected to brokerages, leadership, to uh, Freddie uh, Mac, uh, to the National Association of Realtors and so on. But at this point, we're no longer are wasting our time in education. What is blockchain? Uh, what is Ethereum? What is a smart contract? But rather providing now more details on how to integrate it into their processes. Um, and we're proponents of a, a gradual transition in this innovation. So we have property title, which is uh, closing transactions almost through a traditional way. The consumer doesn't see the blockchain unless they want to connect their wallet. Um, and then we have this, the most innovative settlement through NFTs. Uh, I like this uh, example with Netflix. When Netflix launched, uh, they knew that one day the content, the movies will be uh, streaming online via internet. Yet they started with CDs online. Yeah. And I compare those the title business that we have right now to the CDs online. It's on blockchain, but it's still kind of the CD version, uh, 30 days uh, closing process. Um, and then uh, the transition to the NFT for us, that's a streaming. Streaming ownership entirely uh, on chain. And it's like the Netflix uh, online CDs. Uh, they had those business models in parallel, and they actually stopped uh, this uh, the cities online only two years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's been in parallel uh, working for for many many years. Uh, but now we all just know movies online. That's how I see in five years it's totally doable that suddenly the real estate will be liquid entirely on chain. And uh, our investor Tim Draper recently we had. Um, and we have spaces on Twitter, on X, uh, Anthony Pompliano, who is also very active, both in real estate and crypto. Both of them are telling that most likely it won't be the, the, the government that will um, change uh, the real estate transfers uh, onto uh, blockchain, but rather it's a consumer push. Mm -hmm. uh, the insurance, uh, the title insurance will no longer be needed at some point. The licenses will, uh, the title and escrow licenses will no, uh, will be obsolete because uh, smart contract is the settlement. Why not to have this high value asset to be transferred via a secure protocol uh, as blockchain? Mm. Now, uh, related to being built on, building on base, right, which um, is through Coinbase, but it's an Ethereum layer too, um, since the Denkin, Denkin hard fork on Ethereum went live, uh, the gas fees associated with minting addresses um, on Bayes via property keys went down by over 100x. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, this upgrade, the Duncan hard fork of Ethereum for the industry is like the transition from the modems in the internet space to broadband. Mm suddenly we have this affordable uh, network on blockchain, uh, just like when the internet has those, you remember the noisy modem switching on, uh, a lot of uh, products were not user-friendly just yet, but now in blockchain, it's more affordable. So since the Ethereum merge occurred um, in 2022, uh, the significant upgrade from Ethereum from proof of work to proof of stake did not reduce the, the gas fees. And only with this uh, upgrade last week, uh, suddenly we see a significant, significant drop of fees. And in our case, uh, when we launched the property keys, minting an address was about $2.00 per mint, where the address itself costs, as I mentioned, about $10. So now, and it's, so of course, it's a significant cut, 10 to 20%. Uh, now, since the update, upgrade, 
it is a couple of cents, one to two cents only. Uh, and you can imagine that uh, the activity of minting addresses suddenly spiked. Uh, the base network also is experiencing um, a sudden increase in transactions. So definitely it's a historic moment, I believe, in this upgrade. Uh, more um, significant, probably even the merge itself uh, on Ethereum. Um, so the, the network's performance is definitely uh, now is a foundational um, change uh, for the whole blockchain space. Yeah, great point. And to your point, uh, you know, because people have been concerned about gas fees and so forth, but that's great that the upgrade is lowering those fees. Um, and also, uh, you know, your analogy of going from dial-up modem to broadband, um, it seems we're, we're in that transition phase. So that's really great. Um, and then the property token got listed on Coinbase. I, I, I've been a property token holding for a long time. Um, and I, I believe obviously in properties, that's why I've been holding the token. And um, what, was the listing earlier this year or in uh, last year? It was actually previously, but uh, um, what has happened recently was listing on the Prime app as well as the integration with the Coinbase wallet. Uh, so for us, Coinbase is this gatekeeper of crypto legitimacy. Uh, they do very high quality um, uh, verification of projects. Uh, they check that tokens are utility tokens, uh, that the teams are serious executors uh, behind the projects. Um, and uh, thus, for us, Coinbase is this big player uh, similar to Amazon or Google at the time. Uh, they are building the future economy on chain. Last year alone, uh, their revenues were over $3 billion, so they're growing very, very fast. Uh, and now when you go to Coinbase wallets since last week, you can actually see that uh, you can mint a home address uh, through the Coinbase wallet browser and get a reward for that. And then this week, uh, actually, they will also um, promote a um, put your deed on chain uh, through Proppy Keys, which again um, delivers this real life application uh, for users. Mm. And this may be a tough question to answer right now. Do you foresee secondary markets or is it too early for those nfts i don't know maybe if somebody i guess i could obviously resell it to like say the property owner who may want to mint that nft but i have the let's say i have the entire neighborhood right um but then could i lend it out is that a possibility yet that's a great question we're seeing the first secondary sales of the landmark ai NFTs on uh, OpenSea. Uh, there was a Hollywood sign NFT that was sold a couple of weeks ago for 1.3 ETH, I believe. Uh, for the addresses in the neighborhoods, I'm not sure how this uh, whole gamification will evolve. For now, what it makes sense is actually to stake those addresses. So if you uh, mint over 10 addresses, you can stake all of them at a staking protocol and get a distribution of property tokens from the entire uh, minting revenue channel. Oh, wow. Well, you know what I'm going to do after this interview, right, Natalia? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to go get my world. <laughs> I'm going to go grab up a ton of neighborhoods and uh, and stake them. And oh, anybody. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so I, I'm definitely going to do that. It's that. I really want to play around with that. And and it's just fascinating to me. Um, now, recently, uh, you were at a conference and I, I saw a clip of it where you were talking about Amazon and, and I think Google as well. And them potentially getting involved in real estate and tokenization of real estate and so forth. Can you expand on that and, and your your thoughts there? Actually, I was at a conference called Inman Connect uh, in New York, and it was all about real estate, realtors, real estate portals, and how the residential um, space is evolving. Uh, and many, many panels and keynotes were about uh, the attention of home buyers and the war of portals between Zillow, 
homes.com, apartments.com, realtor.com. Where are the eyes of the consumers when they are searching for a home? And uh, my argument was that uh, homes.com should not spend a hundred million dollars to attract the home buyers uh, for the lead generation business. Mm. Uh, because most likely some of the new startups or the tech platforms such as Amazon or Google uh, could overtake uh, the consumer attention for the real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, because if we figure out the transaction automation, that's Propy's mission. Once the transaction is automated, uh, then the portals and the attention of home buyers, it's the easiest task uh, in the real estate industry to tackle. And imagine if transaction is automated and very secure, why not an Amazon uh, platform just uh, introduces the tab real estate and then uh, you can securely click, click, click and buy it through Amazon or through Google or through a new startup or through Proby. Mm. Um and, yeah, and what I, I just want one item to add, mm -hmm. uh, for example, property keys could also become this platform um, mm -hmm. to become the new Zillow, but global, because now they are attracting the eyes, the attention of people minting their addresses in a gamified way. But then the, through the gamified way, uh, the property keys platform will teach the homeowners on different items, how to sell, how to buy, how to do it on chain. Uh, so that's, that's what I meant that uh, the, this current wow. bottle of, um, of portals, of real estate portals uh, might be kind of unnecessary. Yeah, a, a, a great point. And it's, it's only going to continue to evolve. So it's fascinating. So on that note, um, are you seeing Look, you, you've been at this since 2017, building, innovating, and so forth. But we know the, the traditional industries are going to be slow to adopt. And don't get me wrong, they are adopting. But have you seen a change in these brokers and the National Realtors Association that they're now maybe having their aha moment? Like, oh, we need to pay attention to this. It's coming. And have you noticed any changes there? Absolutely. So many changes, especially from October when the first fake news about Bitcoin ETFs uh, broke. Mm. Uh, first of all, we had uh, a call of one of the major mortgage players in the country. Mm. Uh, this, the organization that establishes the rules for the mortgage industry for uh, whether the cryptocurrency statements should be ad adopted for the mortgage approvals and so on. And uh, they have a whole team already. They want to adopt. They want to make a proof of concept. Uh, and the question is no longer what is blockchain. The question is, please pay attention to us. Please have a call with our team, how we can integrate it. So we spent probably about 10 uh 10 hours of conversations where they beg us to pay attention and find resources for faster integration rather than uh, how it was in the past. Then one of the largest brokerages in the country also just launched a partnership with us, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services of America. Mm -hmm. For now, it's an education um, a platform, education, uh, crypto certified C class for with, with a credit for realtors, but it's a, a very major point within the Berkshire Hathaway umbrella, which historically has been very against uh, Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrency. So that's another win. And then there is another very traditional real estate media that has just uh, accepted property tokens as a form of payment. Um, so we were very surprised how the industry now is accepting cryptocurrencies payment and not Bitcoin first, but the property token, because it's the industry cryptocurrency uh, that has proven to be a good uh, track record uh, in terms of the project behind it. Oh, man, it's fascinating. Uh, I think they're, they're having maybe their aha moment, right? They're waking up to, yeah, we, <laughs> we better get on board. Um uh, okay, question for you, Natalia. I don't know if you can answer this and you'll probably say I can't answer it, but if Redfin, if Zillow, 
uh, or realtor.com or somebody said, came up, came along and said, Natalia, we, we want to buy property because we see this is the direction things are going. What, 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 what would you say? <laughs> well, first of all, I would never sell, well, never say no, never, but uh, mm -hmm. I would not sell to a current real estate player. Mm -hmm. That's why they're not in the top uh, 10 or 20 uh, platforms on the stock market, because they cannot be the innovator that will transform uh, the real estate industry. Uh, secondly, we would never uh, sell to a brokerage because a brokerage is just one side of a transaction. They cannot automate the transaction. You have to be on both sides of, tr of the transaction. Uh, Realtor.com or Zillow.com, they are uh, very limited to the US market. It's uh, a business model that works precisely for the, um, for the US market, while we figured out a business model that could work globally. Uh, and so none of those companies would be interesting for us. And we indeed have a lot of requests for acquisitions through mm -hmm. last cycles, not even now from all the best the brokerages and portals and software uh, companies related to real estate. But I can totally see us uh, to entertain ideas with some tech platforms such mm -hmm. as Google, Amazon, those that I mentioned before, who have uh, the uh, attention, uh, not attention, but I would say uh, technology resources. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. Um, well, you know, I know everybody usually tries to get acquired by Googles and so forth, but uh, it makes sense because you are certainly ahead of the curve and an outlier in, in the uh, real estate industry because you're doing these forward thinking innovative um uh initiatives so that's really great um let's see you know let's continue the real estate conversation we'll circle back to crypto i would love to get your take on the real estate market and what's happening in the us with rates very high uh, people are not really selling because many got low rates um and then it, it's a tough economy right um what is your outlook for this year maybe 2025 well, of course, so the main uh, player in the real estate industry right now um, is the interest interest rate uh, problem. Mm. So I expect uh, there to be some Fed interest rate cuts, very modest, maybe in the middle of this year. Uh, and then the market may recover. Uh, and if the Fed does not take this path, uh, then, of course, uh, we'll, we'll see uh, even more stagnation in the real estate market. Um, the uh, most significant change and uh, challenges are happening now in the commercial real estate, which has more leverage in construction, in development. Uh, the transaction, though, last year, they fall only 20% down, right? Even though uh, the stock market and uh, a lot of industries have fallen up to 70%, 60%, crypto 80%. Um, but the transaction volume uh, in the real estate industry, in the residential real estate uh, industry have not uh, fallen drastically or stopped because people still have to make right. uh, their changes in lives, divorces, marriages, downsizing, moving, and so on. Uh, so the transaction will continue to uh, to be there. Um, but then we have this news with the uh, NAR settlement. The yeah. commission may drop uh, this year, which is uh, obviously might be great for the consumer, uh, but the realtor, um, the realtor community is devastated. Yeah, so I wanted to ask you about that. It's uh, you think that is going to go through, and and it's man, it maybe realtors like you said are not, are not going to be as incentivized to work as hard. Maybe I don't know, or become more competitive. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but um, you think that's going to help? Uh, well, the realtor community will work even harder than they have been right now, and you will see. Uh, the non-professional and part-time realtors leaving the space because the fees for the license are expensive. Uh, so in fact, uh, probably we'll see a higher quality of realtors staying in the market. Um, yet, of course, they're very, uh, very frustrated. Um, but um, I think they will fight more for uh, 
the consumer, especially the buyer. So the seller will remain with 2.5%. They may request uh, an additional 1% or half percent from the consumer because now they they have to deal with more buyers personally. More buyers will come on the market without having a representation. And thus now the uh, listing agent uh, will probably have to deal with them. And then the platforms like Propy and other platforms will occur, will uh, be introduced that will have the will help the buyer to go through this process easier. But there is one good news for realtors. And for the consumers, uh, it is the increased liquidity. Now that the transaction uh, is more and more automated through platforms like Propy, we're very passionate to achieve this uh, better affordability. 10% of the uh, value is lost now in those fees, 10% of home value. So imagine normally you need 5 to 10% in down payment, but instead you have to pay the mortgage fees, title escrow, the title insurance, the commission, and thus even the new generation, when they move, they're afraid to acquire a home uh, or they cannot afford it. But as all the, the fees are decreasing, uh, then anytime the new generation move from one city to another city, instead of renting, uh, they would be more inclined to sell it and buy a new one because the fees are uh, uh, lower and uh, we will get rid of the bureaucracy. Mm. See, that's, that's, that's I wanted to ask you about because you have a great uh, perspective there. Um, so let's switch back to crypto. Um, what are your thoughts on the Bitcoin spot ETF launches and the performances? The inflows have been pretty incredible. Absolutely. I think Bitcoin ETFs is the most significant marketing campaign for the blockchain industry. Mm. All those 11 uh, Bitcoin ETF uh, vehicles have been very serious in attracting uh, the Wall Street investors to the space, uh, both institutional investors as well as retail investors. And I think they've been very successful. Of course, this initial uh, grayscale sell-off uh, was very um, harmful and worrying for all of us. But uh, nevertheless, uh, now is it over $20 billion in flows? Yeah. I, it just keeps going up every day. So I think it's around there. Yeah, yes, it's incredible. And uh, it's prob pro probably uh, the Bitcoin ETF approval is comparable to the Tele Telecommunication Act of 1996 for mm. the internet. So when the internet was still in the gray area, it's this Telecommunication Act of 1996 that made the uh, internet kind of legitimized and uh, it gave uh, the opportunity for commercial use cases to come on internet. Uh, and uh, it provided the necessary infrastructure, uh, competition, uh, different ways to get on internet by serious companies. Uh, now with the Bitcoin ETFs, uh, we have invited the Wall Street uh, community to invest in Bitcoin without having the headache of setting up wallets and uh, keeping the private keys and worry about custody. Mm. Um, yeah, it's fascinating. And I can't wait for it to go beyond Bitcoin. Maybe that'll happen later this year with Ethereum. And then eventually, you know, I don't know, other altcoins and altcoin baskets. We'll have to wait and see. Um, you know, what are you most excited about for this upcoming cycle? Well, we are in a bull market cycle right now. Um, and it, it's certainly different. Bitcoin is ahead of schedule. We got the ETFs and much more. Uh, what, what are you most excited about for this cycle? Oh, that's a good question. Well, at ETH uh, Denver, um, of course, I think there are, there were uh, about four trends uh, that most of investors have talked and uh, entertained about. Um, that's uh, the Bitcoin derivatives, uh, of course, driven by Bitcoin ATF's news. Uh, then it's RWA's real world assets and 
uh, loans and real estate and tokenization and so on. That's the second one. Uh, then that's the deep in where we will see more uh, real life infrastructure projects come into into on chain. Uh, that was super super exciting. Uh, and what next? And fourth, I'm I'm kind of blanking right now. But these were uh, the most. Uh, exciting new new projects i'm also hearing a lot about meme coins which personally i cannot grasp why it would be uh, the big uh trend of 2024 hopefully um other trends will win and uh, we'll again see more utility and real life applications so i would say after the bitcoin etf approval uh, is the biggest news and then the Duncan upgrade is the second biggest news in the hour in the crypto industry. I hope that the ne the next big exciting thing will be uh, something around real life applications, whether it's car applications like Demo, uh, whether uh, it's dipping uh, smart cities uh, being connected and scaling uh, through blockchain. Um, also, I'm super excited about the base community. Now that we've been building on base and uh, um, interacting with the Coinbase ecosystem broadly, I just can see and appreciate the uh, the value of the community and the community of developers and executors in one ec ecosystem. Um, so that's uh, that's also another another item I'm excited uh, a lot in 2024. Yeah, for sure. It's exciting times. Uh, Natalia, it's always a pleasure. And as I stated before, after this, I am about to go check out Profi Keys and Mint <laughs> some addresses and start staking. Um, really great stuff. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Tony. It was a pleasure as always. Thank you so much.